So we're going to go through the V60 ventilator, which is currently the main ventilator we use on the boards around the hospital, but we are anticipating that we'll be seeing it used more on ITU um, and CICU, and that we'll be using the Trilogy ventilators more on our medical wards at some point. But they are on our boards at the moment, so we're finding one A300, A400, ED, and A525. So just a few main bits about the machine. At the back, it plugs into the mains. It does have a battery, so you can transport your patients on it. Um, it's got a four hour battery life, but hopefully it won't take you that long to transport your patient. Fingers crossed. Um, it does need to be plugged into the oxygen at the wall, so where your flow meters go into the wall, you need to take that out and you need to plug this in. Even if you have got your patient on room air on the machine, it is really important that it's plugged into the oxygen, otherwise it will not work. Um, the same if you're transporting a patient, you do need to have it plugged into one of the white cylinders. We would normally recommend it when you, we've got holders here, for putting the oxygen cylinders. We would definitely recommend that you have two full cylinders when you do a transfer because depending on the amount of oxygen and the settings that your patient is on, you will go through the cylinders really quickly. At the side of the machine here, there should be a filter. This machine doesn't have a filter in it at the moment because we're just using it for training. The filter sits here. This, pa this filter will need to be changed in between every patient use. Initially, the plan will be if patients are being put on this, we would like to be seeing them being put onto dry CPAP. So, what you'll get in your pack when you open it is you'll get a fil you'll get a, a filter, some tubing, a connector here that's got an expiratory port in it. So, this little hole is the expiratory port, and you'll have a pressure line. So, when you take the pressure line out of the bag, it looks like this. You don't need this end bit. We're not entirely sure what the end bit is for. All you need to do is cut it off here and just throw the end bit away. So it's very simple to put together. So what you do is you have your filter here. So this filter is to protect the machine from anything that the patient is breathing out going into the machine. The pressure line attaches here. At the other end, it attaches onto the white cap here. So you take the white cap off and then connect it. Hopefully it's really stiff. If it's a bit stiff, don't panic, it will go on. So, because, because there is an expiratory port here, there will, be, there will be air escaping out that the patient has breathed out into the atmosphere. That's obviously potentially gonna contain droplets in it. Um, which is why non-invasive ventilation in COVID patients is counted as an aerosol generating procedure to try and reduce the risk to staff of the exposure to too much of this aerosol. We're adding an additional filter between the expiratory port and the mask. So your filter goes on here like that, and then you put your mask on the top. The mask is a non-vented mask. It doesn't have a filter in it. This here isn't a filter, it's just, it's a safety, it's a safety valve. So when the machine is running, the, there is a little black flap in here, which will just go up and close and close this off. If the machine was to stop running, it will just open again so that the patient's still got somewhere to breathe through. Right, so to turn the machine on, we press on. As soon as you turn the machine on, it will start running and it's quite noisy. So what we'll do initially is we'll just turn it while we're changing settings, we'll turn it into, we tend to turn it into standby mode. So we just press standby and then it will turn off. Some of the V60s have been upgraded so that they can do both high flow and ventilation. If it's got one of these little stickers on it, it means that it can do it is able to do both. When you first go into the standby screen, if it is one of these machines, the screen will look like this and it will say ventilation or high flow. We're going to talk about the ventilation first. So if you press ventilation, then it will confirm that's what you're looking at. Down here, it will show you what mode we're currently in. So we're currently in spontaneous timed mode, which is the NIV mode that we tend to use. But before we go through that mode, we'll go through CPAP first. So if we select modes, 
There's lots of modes on here. We don't need to worry about those particularly. The only two that we will be using on the wards are CPAP and ST mode. So you select the mode you want, so we'll say CPAP, and then you press activate CPAP mode, and then the screen will go from gray to blue. What we then do is we select the CPAP we want. So CPAP is peak, which is your positive end expiratory pressure. So basically you're breathing out against a resistance, which is splinting your airways open and increasing your functional residual capacity, which helps with hypoxia. And as we know in the COVID patients, one of the main problems that they have is that they are really hypoxic. So what we do, the doctors will have told us what peak they want the patient on. So we select CPAP and then we just, whatever we've been asked to put them on, we put them on and you press accept. A lot of patients in other centres, they're finding that they're needing to use quite high CPAPs of anywhere between 15 and 20. The next button along is ramp. We make sure that we leave ramp turned off. So essentially what ramp is, is it's a comfort measure where you can set a period of time where the machine will gradually reach the pressure that we want it to. These are acutely unwell patients, so it's not appropriate to use with them. So you just need to check that it says off. The next one along is C-Flex. Again, this is a comfort mode where it just alters the flow a little um, to make it feel more comfortable for the patient. The easiest thing again, probably to do is leave it off. When you turn the machine on and off, it will remember the previous settings. So as long as no one's played with these, they should always be in the off position when you put the machine on. Next up is FiO2, which is the amount of oxygen that is being delivered. This can be anywhere between 21% and 100% oxygen. If you alter your CPAP, you, it doesn't have any impact on the amount of oxygen being delivered and vice versa. So if I just turn the machine on, so when we're first putting patients on, we're making sure that we put the mask on the patient first and then starting the machine, again, to try and reduce the amount of droplets that are being released out into the air. At the same time, when we turn the machine off, oh, sorry, taking the mask off, we turn the machine off and then we take the mask off. Again, we just don't want to take the mask on or off while the machine's running. So to start it, you press start to cut mode. That's what the alarm sounds like. One of the most important buttons to learn is alarm silence, which is this one. So, as we can see, this is the, what we've set at the bottom of the screen. Up here, this is telling us what our patient's actually doing. So the first thing here is telling us whether our patient is breathing spontaneously or not. In CPAP mode, the patient will always breathe spontaneously because we don't have a backup rate set. Next one along is your respiratory rate. Although this is fair, fairly accurate, it is always good practice to manually check the respiratory rate as well. Along to, next to that is your tidal volumes and your minute volume, which is your tidal volume multiplied by your respiratory rate. Your peak inspiratory pressure, so this is the maximal, maximum inspiratory pressure that the patient's receiving. Because we're using this in, an, in CPAP mode, we can't influence this very greatly because we're not giving them any inspiratory pressure. The next one along is leap. So it's important to try and keep your leap within a safe frame. So these machines can tolerate a leap of up to 60 liters per minute, but we're trying to keep the leap between 20 and 40. There will always be some degree of leap because the patient um, has an expiratory fault in their circuit. So you never want to try and achieve a leap of zero. Next is patient trigger. Again, this will always be 100% in CPAP mode because the patient will always be triggering their own breaths because there are no backup breaths. The last of all is one you don't need to worry about too much, which is TI total. And essentially that is telling you what percentage of the patient's breath is being spent on inspiration. Because we can't really manipulate the length of the breath that the patient's taking in a spontaneous mode, we can't do much about it. So almost don't worry about that number too much. Another useful thing that we've got on here, we've got information about what alarms have gone off so we can see what's going on. And also this button here, 100% oxygen. If you are treating a patient, maybe rolling them or something, and they suddenly desaturate acutely, if you hit this button, it will give them 100% oxygen for two minutes. If you need to give them more, you can add on another two minutes. Again, if you know that you've got a patient that tends to desaturate when you do certain things with them, sometimes it's worth almost just pre-oxygenating them for two minutes using that button before you do what you need to do. Okay. In terms of alarms, these just tend to be the standard alarms that we set for our patients. Um, and so we don't tend to particularly change them. 
So we've got our high and low respiratory rate, high and low tidal volumes, high and low inspiratory pressures, low minute volume, and LIPT is how long it is before the machine alarms if the patient is at their low inspiratory pressure. So for example, if this patient was had a peak inspiratory pressure of 17 for more than 20 seconds, the machine will start alarming. Okay, so that's CPAP mode. Now if we swap over to ST mode, so as you can see ST mode is on here. So if we press select and activate. I'll just put it in standby again just to make it a bit quieter. Right. So ST settings. So in ST mode, so ST stands for spontaneous timed, and this is the BiPAP mode that we tend to use. So obviously if the patient can breathe spontaneously, that's fine. But if for any reason they, they aren't able to trigger their own breaths, the ventilator will give them some backup breaths. So with this mode, we're setting an IPAP and an EPAP. So your IPAP is augmenting your tidal volumes, allowing you to take a bigger breath in. The bigger breath in you take, the bigger the breath out you take, it helps you to get rid of CO2. Um, your EPAP is the same as CPAP in the CPAP mode. So it's splinting your airways open and helping with hypoxia. The next button along is rate. So this is your backup respiratory rate. So we tend to set this at 12, just because that's a fairly normal respiratory rate that people, when they're well, would have. Alongside that is your TI time. So your I time is the length of a mandatory breath, and we can set that. If the patient is breathing spontaneously, the machine is triggered by them starting to breathe in. It detects when the patient starts to breathe out as well. It detects a change in airflow, and the ventilator will cycle with the patient to try and help with synchrony. So we can't, we can't dictate how long a breath in is if the patient's breathing spontaneously. In terms of how we decide to set our eye time, we tend to set it so that we're getting an IE ratio of one to two, so that's an inspiratory expiratory ratio of one to two, which is normal for, for most patients. It might be from time to time we need to tweak that, but you'll get guidance from the medical team if they, if they wanted you to do that. So to change your TI time, again, you just use these buttons. And if you look here, as you change your time, it will change your IE ratio as well. Next up is rise time. So the rise time is how quickly the machine reaches the pressure that you want it to. We tend to start in the middle at three. If we make the number smaller, the air is delivered more quickly. If we make the number bigger, it slows it down. A lot of the time, particularly if a patient is breathing more quickly, they tend to need the air to come at them more quickly. Um, which we're expecting for a lot of these patients with a high respiratory rates may well be the case, but we do tend to start with it at three. And when we look at the top screen, we'll talk about how you can tell whether you've got it right or not. Again, we've got ramp on here, which the same as CPAP we don't use because it's not appropriate in the acute setting. And again, FiO2, we can give oxygen anywhere between 21% and 100%. So if I put, if we press start again, Just wait for some numbers to come up. Give us a second, hopefully. So the top screen looks exactly the same as it does in CPAP mode, but some of the numbers and some of the things on here we will look at a little bit more when the machine's in ST mode. So the first thing that we see here again is that breath by breath telling us if the patient breathing spontaneously or not. So if the patient breathes spontaneously, the little rectangle turns turquoise. If the patient isn't breathing spontaneously, the breath comes up as orange. So it's a really quick and easy way to see whether your patient's breathing spontaneously or not. The respiratory rate is the same. It's how many breaths per minute the patient's taking. Tidal volume is the same. Minute ventilation is the same. Peak inspiratory pressure becomes a little bit more, it's something we look a little bit more at in ST mode. So, we sh it should be expecting our peak inspiratory pressure to be the same as our IPAP. If it isn't, it, and as long as our mass leak is okay, it could well be that we're not delivering the, the pressure at the, an appropriate speed. And this is where we'd start to change our rise time. So if the peak inspiratory pressure is less than our IPAP, it means that we need to make our rise time quicker. So we'd go for, to maybe two or, uh, two or one. If your peak inspiratory pressure is higher, then your IPAP, it means that we're delivering the air too quickly and you'd like me to change it to four or five. 
I suspect with a lot of the COVID patients, we may well find we're going sort of faster rather than slower. Um, again, patient trigger is a lot more important in this mode. So this is telling us what percentage of breaths the patient's taking. Obviously, in an awake alert patient, we would be expecting this to be kind of around 95 to 100%. If you notice that that trigger is dropping and the patient seems to be doing less and less breaths for themselves, let, let somebody know because it could well be a sign that they're deteriorating. The other thing that we can do on this machine as well is we can use it for high flow um, nasal oxygen. So to be able to get onto high flow, you need to make sure that the machine is in standby before you start and you need to use a humidified circuit rather than a dry circuit. So again, these circuits all come in one pack. The circuit will also have an expiratory port, the same as the other one. Unfortunately, I've lost my expiratory port for this circuit, but actually when you're using it in high flow, you don't need an expiratory port anyway. So to put the circuit onto the machine, you attach your filter end here. We don't need to worry about a pressure line when we're using high flow, so you don't worry about adding a pressure line in. Your humidification chamber slides onto the metal plate. The metal plate does get really hot when it's turned on. To turn the machine on, we press here, and then we can alter the temperature. Um, obviously, the bigger the, the bigger the ramp, the hotter it is. And the other thing that we do is we attach this cable to the back here. It will only go in one place and it will only go in one way. And what this does is it then warms up the heater wire that's inside the tubing to keep the inside of the tubing nice and warm. To, in, to, to fill up the water chamber, we use sterile water for inhalation, which comes in the bags. So you just twist the bottom of the bag and then pierce it with this. So when you go to use, when you go to use high flow, you select high flow. The machine will prompt you that you shouldn't be using a mask to do this up in this corner. So what you do is you remove your mask, your filter and your expiratory port and you add on the nasal cannula, which are these wide bore nasal cannula. If you've forgotten to take your expiratory port off, the nasal cannula will not connect. So it will just be a prompt for you that you haven't taken it off. You need to make sure that this cap stays closed. This cap is for if there's a heater wire, but we don't use um, humidifiers that need those heater wires. Okay, so then to start high flow, you press start high flow. So with high flow, we're setting a we are setting a flow rate. We can set a flow rate of anywhere between 10 and 80 liters per minute. When we breathe normally, our flow rate is around 30 liters per minute. So if you've got a patient who is on high flow with a liters per minute of 30, they probably don't need to be on that high flow machine anymore and then someone else can have it. The harder your patient is working with their breathing, the higher the flow they're likely to need. For most of our patients normally, we tend to start at a flow of 50 and then kind of work up or down as we need to. However, it might be particularly if you've got a very breathless patient going onto this, it might well be that you actually need to start the flow a little bit higher. So you can set your flow. You can also set your FiO2. Again, this can be set anywhere between 21 and 100%. Um, so the other thing to remember is that what we're being told at the moment with COVID patients when we're first putting them on to equipment, if they're really hypoxic, we should be using dry CPAP and not high flow. So. It could be that that changes over time, particularly as more research is done and people see whether there are increased benefits for high flow. But at the moment, it should be that the patient is going onto CPAP, not onto high flow. This is likely to be used more as a weaning tool when patients recover and are coming off of mechanical ventilation. The end. <laughs>